This is Majuma. She's now 17. She has a two-year-old baby, Fatima. She was married to a much older man at the age of 15. The reasons why? The effects of climate change. Three years before the marriage, Majuma's father, a farmer, farmed the land and found that his crops were depleting. The land could no longer sustain him and his family. He wasn't able to bring any money home. No money meant no food on the table. He felt that the best option was to marry off Majuma rather than to leave her with an empty stomach. And she's not the only one. It's estimated that between 30 and 40% of child marriages in Malawi are as a result of the effects of climate change. The long-term impacts of climate change aren't just about destruction of the land and loss of livelihoods. Climate change is a gendered issue and it is a matter of racial injustice. It is about the small things that we do in wealthier countries, the things we consume, the plastic we throw away, whether we decide to get in our cars rather than take the bus. And it's also about the big things that our governments do, where they decide to invest their money, how they decide to regulate and how they decide to prioritise. Because although Majuma's plight on the other side of the world may seem completely disconnected from many of the lives we lead, they are in fact intrinsically connected. The decisions we take today will have a huge impact on Majuma and the life of her small child. The way we're going, we're heading for a dystopian future. Even Disney paints a pathetic picture with robots left on a depleted planet Earth. Humans so obese from their consumption, with everything automated, even their ability to walk. And what about those from the global south? Absent even from this dystopian picture. In Wales, we have a saying that came from our patron saint, St. David. He said, Do the small things and find joy in them. In Wales, we recognise our responsibility for our industrial heritage and our contribution towards climate change. Here in the capital city in Cardiff, the first million pound cheque was signed for coal. The first of millions of trillions of spent for the benefit of few and at the cost of people and planet. We know that we consume more than our fair share, but we have an aspiration to change this. A plan, not just set out in policy, a plan set out in law. A law that requires all of our institutions, including our government, to take decisions in a way which meet today's needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. We're the first of two countries in the world to have legislated to protect the interests of future generations. We're the only country that has an independent future generations commissioner to hold our government to account. We have a set of seven national wellbeing goals. Our government have responsibilities and legal requirements to take action to meet them. They must invest money to achieve them. Our act allows us to put the pieces of the puzzle all together, to recognise the connections between things. And of course we want to create new jobs in green, low carbon industries, but those must be decent jobs with good protection for the workforce. Our long term aim is not to create Walmart wind farms or solar sweatshops. Our long term aim is for work to be part of our well-being. Our legislation requires us to question what we do and how that impacts on other parts of the world. It requires us not just to be global consumers in Wales, but for us to be global citizens. We have to take big decisions on reaching net zero. We're taking action to restore nature and better manage our land to ensure the resilience of our ecosystems. Because we recognise that our goal of a healthier Wales where people's health and well-being is maximised, cannot be achieved if we don't have a healthy planet. The pollution that we've generated, the CO2 that we've admitted, has meant that every tiny blade of grass eaten by the animals who farm on our Welsh hillsides is potentially higher in sugar content and has less nutritional value because of the damage we've caused to the environment. So our food is becoming more like junk food, and unless we improve that, we won't have a healthier Wales. And of course, there's that big beast, a corrosive value system, an economic system that has prioritised profit over people and planet. 
and that chain reaction of thousands of small but significant harms that result from that. And so in Wales, we have a new legal definition of prosperity, a productive, innovative, low carbon society, which uses resources efficiently and proportionately and acts on climate change and focuses on a skilled and well-educated population with access to decent work. No mention there of growth, no mention of GDP being the end game for us in Wales. And in the current global context, that's revolutionary. We must all of us ensure that we check how we are growing. We must all ensure that growth does not become a malignancy. We must ensure that it's not a cancer affecting our poorest people and an increasingly polluted planet. So we're a small nation with big ambitions. And what does this mean in practice? This means that we're second in the world on our rates of recycling and we have an ambition to reach zero waste by 2050. It means that we're making those connections between how we reach zero waste and how we connect people and communities. So in Wales, you can borrow things you need for your house instead of buy them from our library of things. You can take your computer or your washing machine or your bike to a repair cafe where you can get it repaired instead of buying new and at the same time you can connect with people in your community and perhaps tackle loneliness and isolation. We're reforming the way we do transport planning. We're moving away from investing in roads to investing in active travel, not just because that's good for reducing our carbon emissions, but because that's good for people's health. It also helps to create a more equal Wales because investing in active travel and public transport prioritises investment to those poorest people who can't afford to buy cars. We're taking our responsibility to support other nations seriously. We're planting trees three times the size of Wales in areas such as Uganda and we're sharing skills and capacity with other nations. We're taking new approaches to the ways we plan, design and build our communities so that they're low carbon, active communities for the future. Communities where the drainage is not constructed through concrete pipes, but instead those communities are cleaned and greened and nature-based solutions are taking away the rainwater. In this parliamentary term, we've seen our government commit to piloting a universal basic income, recognising that poverty is both an effect and a cause of ill health and recognising that our system is broken and we need to do different and better things. We have a new curriculum for our school children which requires our education system to focus on delivering ethical and informed citizens and healthy and confident learners. We have eco-councils in every one of our schools in Wales and now 16 year olds have the right to vote. And so it is about the big things that our government are doing and there's many more, but it's also about the small things. And that's where you come in. Future generations are calling us out. The Gretas in Wales, the Poppies, and the Rebeccas and the Mateos who are working in their nations, calling for their governments to legislate to protect their interests and the interests of those yet to be born. Doesn't every country need a government looking after the interests of future generations? Doesn't every country need to be held to account? Doesn't every country need a connected, long-term approach to securing the future of their citizens and the citizens of the world? We'd love you to join us.